Hi, it's Ivan from the Tesla Stock Channel here, and previously we covered the major battery materials and Tesla potentially getting into the mining industry to massively scale battery production, and in part 2 we covered copper and neodymium. To continue with the theme, in today's episode we'll look at Tesla's interest in getting into the battery recycling industry and JB Straubel's new company, Redwood Materials. So let's get into it. So we start off in March of 2017 with Kurt Kelty, former Tesla director of battery technology, stating the following at a talk he did on the Gigafactory. So recycling materials is a key component going forward for us. Uh, so we're planning to recycle on-site at the Gigafactory. It's, it's, for us, it's a no-brainer. We, we have to do that. Then in May of 2017, we hear that two Tesla executives, J.B. Straubel, who was part of the founding team and former chief technical officer at Tesla that was the mastermind behind Tesla's power systems, battery technology and supercharger network, along with Andrew Stevenson, who was in special projects at Tesla, have become the executive officers and raised $2 million in funding for a battery recycling company called Redwood Materials. Then, during the June 2018 shareholder meeting, JB mentions the following. But Tesla will absolutely recycle, and we do recycle, all of our spent cells, modules, and battery packs. We're developing internally uh, more you know, processes. We're doing R&D on how we can you know, improve this recycling process to get more of the active materials back. And ultimately, what we want is a closed loop right at the gigafactories that reuses the same recycled materials. And interestingly, just as Ke Kelty mentioned previously, JB reiterated the Tesla will be undertaking battery recycling at the Gigafactories. So the question that immediately comes to mind is, what is the relationship between Redwood Materials and Tesla? Will Tesla keep the vertically integrated approach to do recycling in-house, or will it be a similar partnership to the one that they have with Panasonic, in which Redwood Materials could undertake battery recycling either at the Gigafactory or off-site on Tesla's behalf? In September of 2018, we get news that Redwood Materials is registered to do business in Nevada. Then in July of 2019, we get news that J.B. Straubel is leaving Tesla. And as usual, CNBC can't help themselves, putting in their anti-Tesla spin by stating, Brain Drain continues, in the headline. But what do we know about this company, other than the fact that they were set up in 2017 and that they have raised $2 million? Looking at their website, there is not much to go off other than the fact that they are looking to hire positions, such as mechanical, chemical, automation engineers, including R&D and production staff. So not much info regarding what they are up to, based on the info that is available. We can assume that they'll be doing research and development along with production at some point. So for the time being, this is all the info that I could find about Redwood Materials. But hopefully soon we'll find out what the arrangement between Tesla and Redwood Materials is. I'm hoping more information will get released during the Tesla Battery Investor Day early in 2020. So why is battery recycling so important for a company like Tesla? Well, the first reason is, if a battery is found to be faulty after manufacture, it will be far more cost effective to recycle it and produce new batteries as opposed to paying to have it disposed. As faulty batteries, or even used batteries from older vehicles, are a great source of raw materials which Tesla could reuse. Second, from an environmental perspective, you want to keep batteries out of landfills due to the facts that batteries corrode over time and leach toxic chemicals into the soil which unfortunately can make its way into the water supply, plus they can become a fire risk if they rupture or get damaged. So to wrap things up, let's have a brief look at how battery recycling works. And interestingly enough, the lead acid battery, the one that is used to start a regular combustion engine car, is the most recycled product on earth in which about 98% of all lead acid batteries are recycled. And the lead recovered during the recycling process is used to supply over 50% of global demand and nearly 98% of demand in the United States. Meanwhile, only 10% of lithium ion batteries are recycled globally and almost none of the lithium is recovered. Although I have read quite a few articles that there are some companies that are finding ways to extract the lithium from spent batteries. And it's an area where a lot of research is flowing into. The other challenge is that there are many different chemistries within different lithium ion batteries, such as the lithium cobalt oxide, lithium ion phosphate, and lithium nickel cobalt aluminium oxide, just to name a few. Not to mention the batteries are not always labeled, 
with what materials they contain, which can make it pretty difficult for the battery recycling companies. So let's now have a brief look at how the battery recycling process works. So the first step is crushing, in which the goal is to separate as many of the battery materials as possible. Next, you want to subject the materials to screening and ultrasonic washing to separate materials based on their densities. Then you want to subject the electrode materials to hydrometallurgical processes which involve using very strong acids to leach the metals. Depending on which metal you want to leach will determine which acid you will use. And in the final step, materials or metals are extracted from the acid by a number of different ways such as chemical precipitation, electrochemical deposition and solvent extraction. Once complete, some materials can be used to make new batteries while other materials will have lower grades post-recycling and can be sold to other industries in which non-battery grade materials will be fine to use. So in summary, you start off with battery cells and you mechanically break them down and through a number of different processes you separate out the different materials. And yes, this was a super simplified example. If you guys are interested, we could make a whole episode on this topic, so let us know in the comments if this is something that you guys would be interested in. On a final note, while doing research for this episode, I came across an interesting video in which Andy Stevenson did a presentation titled Opportunities for Students in Building a Sustainable Energy Future during Carnegie Mellon's 2017 Energy Week in which he discussed the early days of Tesla and how they operate and the culture within the company, so feel free to check it out if it's something that you guys will be interested in. The link will be below. So that's all for today's episode. And a big shout out to Stuart and Ivan for sending through some really interesting content. So thank you guys for that. And also a huge thank you to our Patreons for supporting the channel, as your support is greatly appreciated and it allows us to grow the channel. So until next time, see you guys soon.